Jensen, Jensen, thoughts on the Zier being disabled for LCS this weekend? Re really? Oh shit, we're f Oh, Jensen, Rip. thank you FlyQuest for posting that video over on social media. And that's a reminder, Azir is disabled for this yep. one. Oriana still possibly a pick unless uh, Team Liquid it. throws an early ban on that. Really big game here. <laughs> oh, no, accidentally! I did love the Chiron was like Jensen limited to only one champion. So oh now we'll see what he ends up locking He literally in. made the tweet at the beginning of the year that he's going to be playing those two until it gets banned. And the Riot game it's gone. had to ban it. We had to ban the Azir, so. Let's see what champion Jensen's gonna go for here. Yeah, question also will be if FlyQuest ends up throwing a ban towards Ziggs, but we might have to wait until that is a counter pick on the other side for them. Another interesting thing is two Senna blue side bans. So two teams that do not want to pull out those Senna compositions, but Fair. recognize its strength that they don't want to give it to their opponent. It's just interesting to see it on blue because typically you see it banned on red um, or blue side first picking it. I want to mention that FlyQuest looking pretty good with the uh, uh, FlyQuest red jerseys. Pretty sick for today. But going into today's games uh, for Team Liquid, um, Udyr's up. And yeah. conversation, we just came out of a successful Udyr game where he was just souped up off of the first three kills. But in general, <laughs> if there's one person that has been incredibly impactful with the pick, it has been impact. I did not intend to Pun do intended. that. Not intended. Not um, intended. And just in general, the amount of tempo that you end up getting for your team. I know it's not going to be a priority on first pick just because Guess what? Like, you know, Nautilus, pretty damn broken at the moment. Um, and Smolder's up too. Yeah, we'll also see what Whippo ends up going for. That'll probably be a pick in the 4 5, but I think that is a topic of conversation is the top lane matchup because Whippo, I think, is a lot of people's leader for first team all pro in the top lane. And then Impact has been one of the top performers on Team True. Liquid as well, whether or not he's on the Udyr pick. So, you can see Impact actually having a slightly higher kill participation. That shouldn't necessarily be used against Whippo uh, if other parts of the map were getting more kills. But Emily, what do you think? Well, in the last time these two teams met, it was actually Whippo bringing out the Impact special of the Mordekaiser, I believe, earlier right. on in this split, um, which was really interesting to see just because traditionally that has been an Impact pick. It, um, so it was really interesting in the first time these two teams met. Obviously, FlyQuest took it pretty handily. Uh, and now we have the Karma and the Jin Zhao coming out for Fly. Ooh, and immediately a Volibear response. There's a lot here to talk about, which is just going to be centered around early grubs and just how uh, the early game will be going. It's going to be fueled by Karma, so anytime Xin is going uh, around, you got a pocket pet uh, Karma that's going to be rotating around there. Uh, Smolder's going to get locked in, but to me, what's going to be interesting is what is going to be locked around uh, Xin and Karma for FlyQuest, just because with how uh, Azir and Karma, I mean, and Orianna are down, you have the strongest control mage past that. So I'm interested to see what FlyQuest will want to do because I think they have a pretty free scaling um, if they have the early game uh, centered around Karma here. But that being said, Smolder kind of throws that in the bin. Yeah, currently I really like that one, two, three from Team Liquid, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the Recon locked in from Busio without an AD carry partner currently. So if Team Liquid wants to, they can continue throwing bans towards the bot lane. They can get rid of Zaya. They could even get rid of a Kaisa pair if they think that's going to be a stronger pick. And... Uh, I think just the fact that Smolder got those buffs in this last patch, again, this is mm -hmm. patch 14.5 without the Smolder hotfix. Yeah. So you still get the massive amount of attacks on your E and the strong scaling on your Q. So I, I like Team Liquid's 1, 2, 3. And a big difference between the prior patch is that Seraphine did get nerfed heavily. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And talking to some players, they just think that she is just not good right now. So with a lot of the non eighty carry bot lane picks being a question, um, that one should just be erased out of my mind. So it's actually looking kind of good for Zaya. Uh, Zaya Rakan, I think, has just been a strong duo for a bit, unless if Team Liquid want to ban it. Yeah. That's an option they have here. And we'll see if that's actually... Visual bug, Team Liquid um, did ban Kaisa, just so okay. those people know. So they are continuing with AD carry bans. I wouldn't be too shocked if Zaya is the next ban as well, since Team Liquid has banned three AD carries in a row at this point. Yep. And moving to Leo is a good call. I do want to bring up the fact that we haven't seen it yet in the LCS, but theoretically, Smolder can be flexed. I don't mm. know why they would do that in this draft, but I'm just throwing that out there. That's a good challenge. I think it's going to be tough versus Karma, but a pick that yeah. we just saw last game is the Sivir. She got like four extra armor right uh, juiced into her into the early game, so mm. that might just push her into a 4-5 okay. pick, uh, especially with like 
uh, Karma and Rakan, it's enough protection and frontline that I think it's doable here. Yeah, it's a good idea to take away yep. Burpo's Olaf, so love that ban here from Team Liquid. If he finds an angle, he will play it. Um, and we'll see if, again, traditionally, we've covered this multiple times in draft, FyQuest usually save that R5 counter pick for Bwipo um, to see what he can bring out because he's very, very confident in a lot of his top lane counter picks. There and we, we have the Sivir coming out for FlyQuest. And I like the build that we saw last game. Navori second, uh, first item Static Shiv. Just just overhaul, there's been good conversation about how uh, Kraken Slayer hasn't been as great dealing with frontline. There's a lot of frontline here, but just in general, you have a good amount of uh, wave clear. And I think that's what she provides for her team. So I want to see what the last pick is going to be for Whippo. As per usual, locking in his pick last here. Ooh. First up, though, we need to see what APA decides to match the Karma with. What's funny is knowing how versatile Whippo is, he could also just play as they go with the dragon oh, yeah. Throw back. Uh, they could also throw Karma top if they really want to, depending on what ends up being locked in here for TL. They have their bot lane, their jungle, their mid, and right now we will see what will round out the rest of their team comp. A little concern for Team Liquid's composition a little bit in the early game. Reminds me versus their game on uh, NRG last week, where it felt sure. like uh, they just had a lot of losing lanes. A lot of, not even just a lot of lanes that are getting pushed in, uh, to yeah. say that a little bit more clearly. Um, so, Grubs, I think, might be a difficult one. Renekton might make it a little bit easier. But that being said, FlyQuest, I mean, uh, Bipo has counterpick. So I think it's going to be tough for Team Liquid to look to defend a lot of plays. But just want to see what Bipo's answer is going to be here. Yeah, I think if I'm Team Liquid, I am looking at Volibear's early strength, right? And then the Renekton to try to bridge the gap. But knowing that, um, obviously, FlyQuest do still have counterpick topside. And it's going to be the Jace coming in these are i'm gonna be blunt here these are some wild looking team comps just comparing the icons we have next to each other from last week to this week they look massively different that is so much speed on the side of FlyQuest, like three hasting champions and then a zen and a recon to fly in whereas team liquid has heavy scaling in front line yeah for yeah. FlyQuest side the benefit is as you would imagine from jace and karma is the poke that they have they have a bit of range versus aurelian soul and smolder so they i would expect them to use it that's what we think, though. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, everybody, and welcome back. It's time for our game number two of the day. FlyQuest going up against TL. TL trying to claw their way up further into the standings. FlyQuest pretty happy about where they are in the standings mm -hmm. right now. The big thing that I think I'm looking at here in this game, in this matchup, I'm looking at mid lane. APA has been under fire from the community for not playing up to the level that they're expecting of him, not being able to clutch it out in some of these moments. We remember, even when he has solid games, last week there were a couple of moments like that real head scratcher of a teleport yeah. that ends up getting him killed cost him a lot of pressure he's the player on team liquid that i am looking for him to step up the most if tl really wants to be a contender yeah absolutely you know we need to see those solid games from him he is going to be on comfort here on the a soul and it'll be interesting to see how he does perform uh, karma obviously can be pretty oppressive especially in those early stages and i'm going to be interested to see how this matchup actually does go uh, it's going to be pretty difficult i think you know when he's trying to stand and channel with the Q uh, on a soul because you're just setting yourself up for guaranteed, you know, monster Q from the karma for easy tethers to be able to get up on you, try to get those winning trades. But there's a tremendous amount of scaling on TL yes. with the double dragons. They're only missing Shivana, but APA and Yan. Shivana's not really a champion. Let's be That's honest. That's the first dragon. You get the set bonus. Yeah, no, Shivana's only a half dragon. It rounds down. But you still get the set bonus, you know? Okay, all right, all right. I'll, I'll give you the it's set worth bonus. worth bringing the bad champion to get the set bonus. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have coherence. Yeah. Well, this time, they got two dragons, like Skinner, a bear, know? the guy from Bioshock, and a lizard. So that that's some kind it's of like set. It's like the Animal Kingdom. Yeah, that, that, that works. The, I guess Nautilus is a zookeeper. Yeah, <laughs> you just have that. You got guy, the crocodile. The big clank You got guy. the bear, you know? So it's like the crocodile's like... You know, we got the swamp and stuff. The bear is the forest. I don't know where. Dragon is space. I thought the, that's a polar bear, dude. Those don't live in a forest. Okay. It, was, <laughs> well, it could be a snowy forest. That's, I, I don't think that. Why can't it right. be a snowy forest? I have never seen a picture of a polar bear in a forest. 
I'm really tempted to pull out my phone and Google. There's, I bet you. I yeah, can you're one. gonna Google and it's gonna say hell no. That's just what that's the result not is what gonna it's gonna, gonna say. No, it's gonna say hell no. To I'm gonna. Get, we're gonna look at this after. They the don't cast. live in the forest. All right. Well, right now he's living in the jungle. He's I'm in sure the, he forest. the forest. He's in the there forest. This game. I don't even need to Google it. It's on my screen right now. All right. He's in Check the forest. Flowers. They're I both cry. starting at their red side forests. <laughs> Where they live. Yep. That's <laughs> Zin Zhao's just a wilderness man. He lives out in the forest too. <laughs> okay, well. Bear grills, you know? Yeah, exactly. He's, uh, just you just don't want to know what's going to happen if he has to stay out too long. Please, no. <laughs> the survival instincts kick well, in. No, we Sometimes don't. it's not worth surviving. No, I'm, I'm going to leave. <laughs> leave before that goes any further. <laughs> I thought you knew exactly where I was going. I, I, yeah, I, I, I know exactly you. where I we're going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's look at bottom line here because this is our second game in a row now. We're getting a Sivir. Yeah. This time in response to the Smolder that is turbo strong with those buffs before the hot fix nerf. This guy is like so scary now with the buffed up E. Yeah, absolutely. He's really, really strong. Um, but it's, it's going to be interesting because if you can't actually interact heavily with the opponents in lane, uh, then obviously it's harder to get those uh, scaling going. If Sivir can give you locked under turret, they don't have the luxury of just kind of sitting there and waiting for Q and last hitting every minion with that Q. So. Uh, we'll see how this is going to go. Masu, Busio pushing forward, looking to poke away. This one's going to be lethal tempo uh, on the Sivir. Pops the ghost. That had to be an accident. There's, yeah. there's no way. I think uh, that was just a, a little bit of a, a fat <laughs> finger there. Thumbs, Thumbs up, up guarantees it. Yep. yep. Thumbs up lets you know that was not the intention. But we'll see if there's any sort of a punish for it, at least for Masu. It was the ghost finger and not the flash finger. Yeah. One of them a significantly longer cooldown than the other. Back in mid lane, though. One of them's a much more useful finger. Yep. <laughs> Gotta make sure you. No, I'm not. I'm, never mind. I'm not. <laughs> anyway, back in uh, back in mid lane. Let's a little bit of Jensen versus APA here. You know, we, we've been talking about APA needing to step up, really needing to find that that confidence, that consistency here. Going up against a guy like Jensen, who's just been at the top of North American mid lane performances for a really long time. He really has, but. It's, it's also important to note that he kind of took a dip, right? He wasn't yeah. playing that well individually on Dignitas. Yes, he was on a worse team, but he also didn't look that good individually compared to how he is doing now. So he's having a bit of a resurgence. I think he's a lot more motivated now that he is on this top team, realizes, hey, if I want to make this work, if I want to keep this career going, I got to be playing at my top level, got to prove myself, prove that I deserve a spot on a top team. And I think he's done just that this split as Impact's going to go in. Yeah, Impact ready to start this one off. Dice is right back away and he's ready for the first blood. Now, Busio regrets showing up here. He and Whippo thought they might have had the move, but TL read him like a book. Yeah, they read him like a book. And man, that is a really strong 2v2. Busio, you could show up, but you're going to do nothing compared to what this Volibear, Bear, especially a PTA Volibear this early on. So much upfront damage, plus the lockdown. Nothing that Bwipo could do from that spot. One team brings in a bear. The other team brings in a guy dressed like a bird. That's... Yeah, which is going to win? I mean, you know... I'm voting for the bear. Whether or not he lives in a forest, still up for debate. But right now... Is it? He is... Where is he heading right now, Flowers? Well, Back to the forest. He's on vacation. Just kill the rocks. He's on vacation. He's <laughs> taking a hike. He's exploring Summoner's Rift. He just visited his friend the crocodile in top lane. They yeah. had a great time. That's true. They, they shared a lunch. Too. It was shared <laughs> like Jace. <laughs> that was delicious. All right. FlyQuest, the thing we, we also have to talk about as we are going towards this final week is the amount of playoff experience this top side has. We touched on it with Jensen, but Whippo and Inspired have a tremendous amount of experience as well. And they are, you know, kind of using this kind of like new era strategy, I would say, where you're building around a, a couple of younger players, a couple of rookies. I think EG is really the team that, that first kind of did this uh, when they were playing with you know, Impact and Inspired and they built around JoJo and Danny. Um, and that roster really showed that, hey, this can work. It doesn't need to be building a team around imports as the carries. You can have these young players. There is talent. There's people that can really step up and do it. And Masu and Busio are some of those new guys that FlyQuest is trying to replicate that success with here. Yeah. You know, pair them with veterans, pair them with stability, show them what you can get done. Ooh, Busio making that rotation towards the solo lane again. This time it's mid, and this time they get some value out of it. APA losing that flash. If I'm FlyQuest, what I'm looking to do now is make sure they return here, punish that again in the next five minutes, mm -hmm. and try to keep this dragon stacking slowed down. Exactly. They'd love to do that. Uh, there's still TP on APA, so he's not going to lose too much because he did just walk straight back to lane. Uh, he's not going to do any sort of a, a sidestep side for a tier or anything like that. Uh, he is just going right towards that haunting guys, so likely rushing towards Leandries. I think this is by far the strongest first item. 
uh, on the ASOL right now. It is really, really powerful to be able to just apply that AoE damage. You get the burn on everyone. Uh, it can really help to kind of ramp up that DPS. Uh, it makes you a lot tankier as well. You know, getting the additional HP can, can feel quite nice. Uh, but sometimes I'll see people go tier into Landry's and things like that. So it'll be interesting to see if he does actually struggle whatsoever with the mana. Well, Jan has hit his 25 stack mark to get the ever so critical AOE on the Q round about six minutes into the game. Inspire jumping in. They want to go after APA. He drops the meteor on top of the Zinjao, but it ain't going to grab a kill here. Jensen escaping back underneath the turret as APA gets a spear in his spine and Inspired gets the first kill of the game for FlyQuest. All tied up now, one-to-one -one on kills as Impact. Coming down here. Yeah, Team Liquid's not going to get anything back in terms of PvP just yet, but they're going to try to steal away some chickens, get something for their troubles. Inspired. Nope. He's got the smite on the big chicken. I'm going at least get the second one. Inspired's still looking to go here. He's got the ulti ready. Now they've locked down the enemy jungler, and FlyQuest gets a nice punish. Inspired's ready to go right back in. Core JJ tries to escape here with a nice little bit of Spider-Man moves, and he will sling his way to safety. FlyQuest up a thousand gold and a kill now. Inspired just crushed him there. Umti didn't have his flash because he had used it on that top side on that initial gank, which made such a big difference in this skirmish. The fact that he couldn't actually flash over the wall to stun Inspired, I think his Q was going to expire, so he had to go on Jensen. He also misplaced his Sky Splitter, which at the very least would have got Jensen's flash or killed him. So uh, some mistakes from Umti and some great plays there from Inspired and utilizing that flash advantage that he had. Gets him the first kill, also gets him the second. He's got to be feeling really good about this. And note, Doran's Blade on both of these junglers. This is kind of some of this new era tech. Really efficient buy here early on that gives you that early game power for the skirmishing. Inspired here, flashes past the Sky Splitter, has the ulti up, in comes Busio, flash W, knocks him up. Really well played there. Re-engages as well as was coming back down. And I think it's so important, too, that Inspired got that smite on the big chicken because that's what gave him level six, yeah. which gave him the confidence to flash in aggressively like that, like you're talking about, and continue going for that fight and grab that second kill. And you know what, Isaac? I can tell you've been doing your play-by-play -play homework because I didn't yeah, you even know that that was called Sky Split. Ah. I have called it a lightning bolt for just about ever since the champion got reworked. So. I would say the student becomes the master, but you're yeah. too good at play-by-play. -play. Nice job, So the buddy. student yeah. teaches the very good teacher. So Hold, uh, honing those skills, small let's go. Thing. I respect that. <laughs> Hell yeah, okay. Well, APA is going to have to make sure he's respecting the power of this karma. We know how oppressive this champion mm -hmm. gets if it's allowed to just maintain lane pressure, spam out those inner flames, especially when it's enchanted by the mantra and it guarantees the AoE explosion at yeah. the end. I was, uh, I've heard it expressed before as karma's Q without the enchantment can feel like it's impossible to hit the damn thing. Karma's Q with the mantra feels like it's impossible to miss. Exactly, it so, is so powerful. Really, really difficult if you're just constantly being bombarded by those things. FlyQuest still at a 1,000 gold lead. FlyQuest has the first three grubs. FlyQuest has the first Drake. Everything in these first nine and a half minutes is going FlyQuest's way after that Team Liquid outplay in the top lane. Jensen and Inspire trying to fight here for the crab. Wind does not become lightning just yet. Umpty getting back away as Inspired and Jensen are ready to start up the grub camp number two. There's the first grub. It looks like, okay, TL is not going to try. Sometimes you would see junglers try to run in, smite, steal one of them away just to prevent the six point from being achieved. But no, FlyQuest going to get all six. Exactly. You can see Smolder on the bot side, so that's the trade, right? Yawn down there. He does have a Sheen already. How many plates does he get? He gets one so far. Uh, there is going to be some farm sacrifice as well, because one full wave did die to the tower. So he's prepping up these minions, autos them down, gets a couple more stacks, uh, and is going to base. You're not going to stay around for that second plate, unfortunately, but did get a little bit of an injection of gold. And uh, we'll see if that ends up being worth it, because it's going to be tough, man. When you give over all six scrubs against a team that has been pushing you in, you're going to probably get a lot of value from that in the next three and a half minutes before these plates fall. I think they're going to probably get at least a couple more plates. A team that has been pushing you in and a team that has a great side lane champion mm -hmm. for the mid and late stages of the game in the Jace, right? And a guy like Whippo, the guy wearing who the feathers. you know is... Man, what? <laughs> no! I was, <laughs> I was gonna say a guy you could trust to pilot this well and, and min-max some of those. Yeah, I guess Rakan is also in, in, in the game. He's, he's there. <laughs> he's, he's hanging out. He'll spawn grubs too when he hits yeah, stuff. See? 
All right, that works. Well, Bwipo has now traded lanes here. Honestly, FlyQuest doing the old switcheroo all the way around. Jensen dealing with impact up here in the top side. Whippo pushing out the bottom lane, and you'll see Masu ready to clear those waves back in mid as APA continues piling on the Stardust. Remember, by the time you get to 20 minutes or so, you kind of want to see him having that 10 stacks per minute state to really become the scaling monster that we all know Aurelian Soul can be. Currently sitting at 90 here, 11 and a half minutes in, has not been able to fully free farm in the mid lane yeah. like the ideal scenario would be, but still doing all right. Exactly, and he's not playing against a super easy matchup where you can just WQ on cooldown to get those stacks, but they're looking for a uh -oh. dive here. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to get away from this one at all. That flash was not not the uh, answer. Uh, it at least gets the flashback from Inspired, who would have died to the heated up turret damage from the last shot. But another kill on that mid lane dragon, stopping some of that scaling and setting Whippo up to do a ton of damage to this bottom lane turret. Exactly what you were talking about. Max out that plate money in these last couple minutes. Yeah, exactly. They have the six grubs. They're working on it. He's going to get the full tower, by the way. So all those plates are going to be falling down in bot lane. They'll get the first tower, they'll get the dragon, and they get the kill. And now, I want to check in on the gold here. It's about 800 gold ahead, even just individually in the top lane off of that play. So much gold just went into the pockets there of Whippo. And that flash definitely was one APA would want back. You need to wait to use the flash until at least he actually dashes in, because Inspired hadn't even dashed in before he flashed, as far as I know. I think he was maybe trying to, like, anticipate uh, the RW from, from Busio, you know, try to avoid that grand entrance, not get CC'd up, uh, but, you know, didn't quite find the play ends up wasting the flash, doesn't really get anything from it, and now is going to be a bit more vulnerable in those side lanes once again here, but good news, has Leandri, so has completed that first major item. You can see those are coming right. in pretty much a, a, across the board, getting pretty close to that uh, for most players if they don't already have it. You know, Malignance is done, Zunder Sky done for Inspired, and Inspired is going to be ridiculously strong right now. Yeah, dude, this guy is not the dude you want to mess with. You can see also only four stacks left on the, the dog food bag jungle item to feed the pet, make him grow up into a big old boy. So Inspired will soon have the advantage of the smite as well. You can see that Umpty and Core JJ were walking around seeing if maybe they could find somebody. There is a lot of lockdown mm -hmm. between those two champions, but FlyQuest not really giving them the angle to make that happen. We'll see now if they can turn it into something up here on the top side. Whippo jumps in on impact. Yeah, it's a nice trade from him, but now he's used some cooldowns. Oh, Umpty's died. standing on top of the control ward. They really want Whippo here. He goes to the skies. Impact goes in, but now Busio's ready to reinforce. He finds a knockup, and Whippo's already down. Umpty takes the kill and more damage pours through apa gets it and a beautiful hook onto the third target puts jensen in the dirt next to him apa is gonna die as the one traded back but tl makes a play huge play on the top side there from tl as they're just raining down hellfire onto whippo both dragons getting involved masu looking to chase him down but mc's here yeah there's your sky splitter masu gets hit by it but hey still has one third hp remaining still has that fed zinja we were talking about mm -hmm. right behind him ready to back him up even though this was team liquid's first big play that went their way this game FlyQuest still in the lead but let's take another look at how tl set it up yeah this was really well done impact is trading heavily trying to make sure he has the push umpty's behind him he spotted on that ward but it just doesn't matter in with the q turns off the tower as everyone piles in they have mom coming in from a long distance then apa TP's in, beautiful falling star comes down there from APA, stunning up multiple members as they can look to chase onto Jensen. Good lockdown from Core, hits the dredge line. Sky Splitter connects, another kill there for them. Picked up on the back end of that fight. Well played from TL. If it's been like the game was going more and more towards FlyQuest, TL needed a punch back, and that was it. And congratulations to Jensen, uh, who now passes Santorin for 11th LCS all time, over 3,000 career assists. That is an insane number, man. This guy has been a part of the LCS and just been one of the biggest performers in the LCS yeah. for so long. It's the only way you get numbers like that, man. Those aren't no rookie numbers. Something personal trying to take down Santorin, you know, picking the karma. Yeah. That's an easy champion farm assist on. Oh, yeah. Just he was gunning for that 11th spot. Mantra shield. Oh, no, I managed to get an assist <laughs> on every possible kill in the fight because I buffed up all the boys. Speaking of the boys being ready to go, Yawn is, boom, right there, hitting that 125 sweet spot on the stacks. 15 minutes and 45 seconds. Pretty nice timer to hit your second upgrade threshold.
Yep, and then now they move him over towards mid lane, and he came over the wall and took those stacks from the Raptors. So this is where you can really accelerate it. You rotate the Smolder to mid lane. You have those CBR boots. You have the Essence Reaver here. In pro play, basically everyone is going Essence Reaver Shojin now. Yeah. Um, obviously that buff, you know, from the patch is helping that out even more because Shojin has no crit, so it didn't scale uh, with that E. But now it does is you're getting those additional stacks, and we'll see if that's going to be the build here coming out from Yon. Um, but now he can go over to Wolves, so you just do mid wave, Raptors, Wolves, bouncing back and forth. If you can find a skirmish in there, that's even better. But this is how you can really accelerate your stacking. You, you touched on it just a couple seconds ago. He was 125. He's 141 now before he even gets the wave. And most of the smolders we've seen in the LCS so far have hit the 225 mark around 23 minutes. It just about always comes out to something close to 10 stacks per minute. So if Jan can keep up this hyper-accelerated pace, if he can hit a 225 at 19 minutes or something like that, that would be absolutely insane for TL and being able to make up for some of this 2,500 gold lead that FlyQuest has built. Because FlyQuest, you can look, it's not just the gold. It's both dragons so far. It's yeah. all six grubs like we talked about earlier. Well, it's both teams have two dragons. Turret. Oh, it, it, is the, it is the two dragons. Okay. Well, that's... Uh, that's that's a very nice, smart-ass comment, Azale. I, for a second, I was like, oh, wow, I really missed something in the game. But then I'm like, no, it's 17 minutes. There can't be four dragons. What? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah. I, oh, that was, oh. I, I, I kind of boomed you on that one. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I could see you like, wait, what am I missing? Yeah, I was like, oh, man. The stance changed I, and everything. You're I was like, like, what am I doing? Close to the screen. I'm, I'm confused. What has happened to me? <laughs> now I know what's happened to me. You, you happened. I apologize now, for that. FlyQuest has uh, established control in this bottom side river. They got all five men grouped up and ready to fight for this Drake. This will put them on soul point. This is a cloud soul. Very, very powerful for a Sivir comp. It's 20% movement speed all the time, even without the ulti coming. TL, yeah, are they even gonna try to challenge no, for this? They're giving it up. Yep, Impact still has the Unleashed Teleport if they wanted to use it, but it would have been way too late. So FlyQuest moves to soul point now as TL gets their first turret of the game in the tier one top side. Yeah, so now there's a lot of pressure to make sure that you are fully online for this next dragon here um, because it is such a powerful soul. Uh, it's not even just for that Zipper. It's incredible for Rakan. It's incredible for a lot of these champions here. Plus just the flat move speed is super, super strong. It's 20% flat move speed that you do get, which is ridiculously good. Um, we'll see if TL are going to be in position to actually fight this next one. They're only 2k down. Um, hopefully, they have 225 stacks by the time that does spawn. You know, we have been seeing some of the faster ones, like you said, at 23 and stuff, but we've also seen Smolders not hit it till like 27 minutes and whatnot. Yeah. I do think Yon is, is on a pretty darn good pace right now. He's up there around 170, so... As long as he gets that before the next dragon, he'll be good. Uh-oh. Umpty trying to keep himself off the endangered species list as Whippo and Inspire jump in on him. But Impact being there, Umpty spinning the ulti, it makes FlyQuest not want to overcommit trying to kill the enemy jungler. And yeah, the important part here, I think, is when we look at that dragon timer, four minutes until it arrives is also right about 23 minutes on the clock. So the expectation, I think, is that Yawn will hit the mark. He will have that smolder buff as Core JJ is forced to flash away from the grand entrance. If Busio knocks him up there with Whippo and Masu also rotating down, they should be able to do enough damage to kill him. So Core is going to respect that. The Herald helps them take down the Tier 1 in the top lane for FlyQuest. It's going to get the charge on the Tier 2, but no more damage after that as Jensen keeps the wave shoved up in mid. Yeah, we'll see also if APA has the Skies Descend, that upgraded ulti. If he has that ready, that is really big. Because if you get 225 stacks and you have that super powerful ASO ulti, there is such a tremendous amount of upfront AoE coming out. You know, one Q splashing across the team with the true damage, the W comes through, the ulti comes through from Yawn, then over the top, the Sky's Descend, the upgraded ult, is basically unavoidable, right? Like, yeah. that thing is hitting everyone. It splashes almost the entire map, if not the entire map, plus the AoE itself is pretty massive. And he does have a pretty good, uh, mark here right now at 190 stacks just about there for APA. So okay. he's been farming the Stardust pretty effectively. I do think that they're in a spot where they can definitely win this fight. If they win that fight though, it's not like it gets them the game or anything. It just kind of continues the game. I think on the other side, if FlyQuest win that fight, it's probably lights out. It's going to be really tough, I think. You know, uh, going up against a, a Sivir comp here with Cloud Soul, they are going to be so much faster to chase you down, to kite you out. It'll feel really, really tough for TL. Pressure's on for Team Liquid. Two and a half minutes until the fateful Drake spawns. 197 now on Yon's stack. Should be able to stack up all three of these remaining minions here. He hits 200, so just needs 25 more here in about two minutes. Quick Shouldn't mass. be too hard to find that. 
but FlyQuest still with about the same gold lead they've had for a long time. So mm -hmm. to give credit to TL, they have stopped FlyQuest from being able to balloon that up even further. Yep, yep. The gold lead doesn't really matter that much, I think, at this point. It's going to be much more down to execution. Uh, we'll see if everyone does have the same item completions, as obviously that is going to be really important. But we also have to look at the next couple opponents coming up here for TL. Uh, they are sitting right now at 5 and 6. They've got Dig and then Immortal. So it will get easier for them. But if they could take down FlyQuest and have a 3-0 week, you hey, you could even potentially catch FlyQuest. Of course, that would be you know, tiebreakers and FlyQuest that lose their other games. But you know the top of the table is within reach for them if they can have a really good final week, build that confidence going into the first week of playoffs, get a better seed, dodge some of these tougher teams. That is really the goal here for TL. Well, let's go ahead and check in on some of those items because I think what you're talking about here with the completed item breakpoints is going to be huge for this upcoming soul fight. The Steric's Gauge was just completed for impact. It is two major items completed for the top mid laner and AD carry of yeah. both teams. The big difference right now, Inspired also just completing his Sterex while Umpty is still sitting on components. So if that doesn't change by then, that could be a big difference factor there. Both supports, I mean, you've got the locket done for Busio, which is pretty big over there in the inventory for Core JJ. Still fumbling around with some garage sale pieces, but Team Liquid will mm -hmm. hope they can get him there as well. Yeah, we'll see if he's gonna be able to get that little bit of gold. And Inspired, you know, he is going to be that big difference, obviously. You know, has that second item, has a lot more farm. And I'd also just say, you know, generally speaking, at this point of the game, he's just playing the stronger champion. You know, Crescent Guard is so powerful. The ulti over on, on Zizou allows you to be so durable in the front line, so disruptive. Ball of Bear, it's a lot tougher. You know, if you get kited out, if you get CC'd up, you can kind of get stuck in that mid range, and then you're just dead, like you say. And, you know, he's going to go forward. You're going to get slowed up by a, a Karma Q. Everyone's going to get Monstra E'd. You know, that Inspire is going to come through. You're getting poked down, shielded up, sped out. It's very, very difficult. Okay, 22 minutes and 45 seconds into the game. Skies are ready to descend, and Smolder has 225 stacks. TL has everything they want, but do they have enough to stand up to FlyQuest? One and a half thousand gold lead. It's shrunk to the smallest lead that it's been for a long time here in this game. TL couldn't ask for much better of a spot to have to play this fight from. But we'll see who has the execution, like you were talking about. Masu has taken a little bit of damage here so far. A little bit of a speed up coming in as Inspired wants to start out the fight. But here comes Bomb over the top. Masu has to get out of the way as Impact's in the middle of everybody. But is going to be burned down first. Execution finds one. Execution finds two. Shut down over to Yawn. And Team Liquid has won the first part of the fight. Jensen, Masu, and Whippo all standing around seeing if there's any way they might be able to still fight this. But I don't think there is. Soul denied as FlyQuest died. Team Liquid gets it done. FlyQuest tried a hard force in there. Are they going to go up towards Baron? At least they can get some vision potentially here. Uh, not going to be any sort of a Baron start, of course, but they want to maintain vision. They want to make sure that FlyQuest isn't just coming out of base and going straight to it. Yon going to be spotted, though. Gets a little bit awkward. But the, we have to look at the replay because Inspired there goes with the W Flash. When becomes Lightning, flashing forward onto APA. But watch how TL kites back. Everyone going to be kiting back into this area here. And that is going to make it so difficult. Because look at this zone. You're all funneling into that zone right there in the middle. All for the AoE here. They're all stacked up for the Skies Descend, for the AoE from Yon as well. Look at the AoE damage falling down. Whippo, Jensen, Masu all kite back. But all they can hit is the front line, whereas they have this perfect concave on the other side. Everyone from TL was connecting. Really well played on the fight there. Well handled, kiting back into the perfect spot and making the most of their AoE. I favor Team Liquid at this point in the game. Despite the fact that FlyQuest had the control for the long amount of time that they did, I think that was the make or break moment like we were talking about. Mm. But TL now with this Smolder in the spot where, again, this is pre-hotfix nerf Smolder. This champion is insanely strong. Generally, anytime something needs a hotfix nerf, it's it is really incredibly powerful. So you've got that plus the, the grand scaling Omega Dragon in mid lane. Mm -hmm. This is tough for FlyQuest now. I think they're going to have had need incredible cohesion to come out on top. Absolutely. I mean, they do have good scaling themselves, but one of the problems is range. Range becomes king as you get towards the late game, right? You know, I, I always say the two stats that scale best with skill are range and moves. I agree. Uh, that is going to be tough here for Whippo. Also, not face checking the brushes. That can be a problem. That can be a problem as he is going to get eaten alive. You walk into some brushes, not only is there a crocodile, there's a dragon. That sucks. A dragon is just a magic crocodile, Isaac. 
I mean, I, I don't know about you, but a crocodile that can fly, that sounds... <laughs> that's like the apex predator, man. Do you think when dragons eat stuff, they spin around in a circle like a crocodile does? <laughs> Maybe. I hope so. That's my head cannon now. That would be great. I just want to see a spinning dragon as... Jensen and Inspired have to try to get the hell out of town, but Umpty's looking to cut him off. Say goodnight, Jensen. Here comes Mom. Here comes Impact. Here comes APA ready to keep this going. Breath of Light to try to slow him down here a little bit with the Rylies as Umpty and the rest of TL aren't going to get these remaining three, but Jensen's dead for the next 30 seconds. Whippo only just now respawned. It's Inspired has been chunked. Baron could be a play here, oh. or they might still be looking for, oh no, Masu. Masu, buddy, this is not the spot you needed to be. It's Baron for sure after that one. Team Liquid roaring to life. Yeah, that is tough there. I think Masu thought for sure they were going to be going down in the river towards Baron or something, and now Inspire's caught as well. He's slowed up by the Rylice. You're gone. What was that? There's no way that crab was that important. Oh, my God. The wheels have completely fallen off for FlyQuest. You know, this was a game where maybe it was slightly in the favor of TL after they got that fourth dragon, you know, deny the soul. But I still thought it could have been anyone's game. These last couple of minutes, though, has just been disaster after disaster after disaster. Face check and bot lane, you die. Go up top lane, you die. Then overstay top lane, your ADC dies. Then your jungler is killing the crab, he dies too. It's just everything going wrong. A couple minutes ago, we were talking about FlyQuest being potentially one fight away from winning, and they were 2.5k up. Now, it is completely flipped. It has gone 5K the other way to that 2.7K lead now for TL, and they are looking fully in control. And man, I just want to praise Impact again. I feel like I do this a lot on any team that Impact is on because the guy is always such a fundamental, foundational aspect of the success of any of his teams. We always joke about top lane being an island. You know, the whole game has 45 kills and the top laner's got 3 KP. Impact has the highest kill participation on his team. He is at 9 out of 10, mm -hmm. no deaths on a frontliner. He's enabling these massive cannons of APA and Yawn to fire into the FlyQuest lines and destroy them. The croc cannot be stopped at this point in the game. This guy is just the consummate professional, right? He's exactly what you want from a League of Legends pro. He's maintained at the top for so long, but APA potentially in trouble. TL trying to bail him out. I don't know if APA is the one in trouble just yet. The skies descend, and Team Liquid's ready to reinforce their boy. Here it comes. Yawn's on a rampage as APA kites away with a breath of light, and Yawn's ready to follow up here for a triple kill on Smolder's execution. FlyQuest thought they might have been able to make a move. Fantango. They might have been able to go, go for, for that Drake, but it ain't gonna happen. Masu and Jensen just running the hell away. Yeah, they're not gonna try to chase in. They wanna focus on the game win here. Not gonna go for the Penta, but TL looking fully in control. FlyQuest look for the desperation play, but the stasis answers everything, and then APA just flies over the wall, makes them look silly as TL are closing in here. They're looking to put the finishing touches on this one. They just leave APA to stand there and take the Drake. You can see it takes incredi incredible mechanics to take down the Drake as Aurelian Soul. You do Drake need to Drake sit action. there and just puke on it for a solid 15 seconds. There can only be one. There is only one, and he is APA. Sitting on two, three, and eight here now on the Dragon. I said at the beginning of the game, I need to see him have stronger performances for TL to be a contender. He ends up playing the bait on this one, but the rest of the team is ready to go. Yeah, that was really well played. Buzio looked for the flash to engage in on APA, but he had the Seekers, goes in the stasis, comes out after dodging that CC, flies over the wall, and just spits all over him. Fire gets burned down. As we see Jan pick up an easy triple. Could have been a pentangle, but now we're gonna watch Whippo potentially in some trouble here once again as Jan and Cora are with him. Jan being there just makes everything so scary. Accelerated shock blasting gonna find the target. Mom roars in. Lucio trying to protect Masu. Inspired here in the front, but he might just be bursted down. Instead, they turn around onto Yon, but they can't kill him in time. Breath of light from the side. Yon is godlike, and there's just nothing left for FlyQuest to do. A double kill for Yon. Masu is slowed by the breath of light with the Rylai's Crystal Scepter, and Masu's dead too. APA picks up another, and Umpty's not ready to stop. Jensen and Busio running for their lives, but their lives are forfeit. A double kill for APA. He He's ready to make it a triple. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Liquid are ready for Super Week. The breath of life becomes the breath of death there from APA, chasing him down, getting three kills.
Team Liquid. They were down in the early game. They trusted themselves to dig in, defend, and scale up. And they're going to scale straight into a victory against the number one team, starting off Super Week with a dub. Well played game there from TL. FlyQuest had some strong performances in the early game. Looked like they were the ones who could dictate the pace of the game. Got the three dragons really quick, but could not secure the soul. Thanks some very quick stacking from Yon. Had 225 before that fourth dragon did spawn. They had the upgraded ulti there on APA. They had two core on all their carries. They were ready to fight. They dominate the fight. And from there, FlyQuest looked a little bit lost. Everything went wrong so quickly for this team from a position that looked like they still could have maybe won that game. The soul fight was it. That was yeah. the turning point of the entire game. And I think you hit everything perfectly. They needed the item break points. They needed the ulti upgraded for APA. And they needed Smolder's final evolution. They got all three. And FlyQuest played that fight the same way they had played previous fights. Hey, we're just going to skill check you. We think we're the better team. We're going to go in. Even if you were the better team, you weren't better enough to fight the power of scaling that Team Liquid had afforded for themselves, yep. had bought for themselves through not allowing that lead to expand. We looked back at that game, it was a two to two and a half thousand gold lead for what, about 15 minutes? Yeah. And then once we got to that dragon fight, it had actually shrank below 2k for the first time in a long time. Really good job from Team Liquid managing their losses, accepting what they had to, and keeping the game close enough to bounce back and win. Yep, absolutely. And it's going to be interesting going forward. Do we see Smolder getting through more? I think Smolder 100% is going to be 100% presence this weekend, but I think it should be probably on the ban list. This champion just scales way too far out of control. All righty, reminder, everybody, during the 2024 Spring Split, that's right now, you can use your MasterCard to make a purchase from the end client store and save your card on file to be entered for a chance to win a trip to a League of Legends event or a set of eight Player of the Week statues. Entry period from March 2 to March 24. Now it's time to join Hercules and Yawn on stage for an interview. Hi everybody, it's Hercules and I'm here with Team Liquid's Yon. Yon, we have to get into that. How does it feel to have come back from uh, the Okay, Berserker, bro. Um, feels pretty really good. Happy brother, bro. Honestly, the last couple like losses really sting. Especially because I feel like we're not that bad, but <laughs> we play very inconsistently and we're trying to fix that at least. Uh, well, I mean, consistency is a good thing. So you guys um, are allegedly going to be heading up against Dignitas soon. So I got a, I got a little note backstage, I guess. X, you said that Tomo is the best smolder in league. What do you have to say to that? He probably definitely does have more games than me, but I would pride myself as someone who stacks very fast. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, I didn't know Sivir E actually doesn't give you a stack even though you queue. Like, there's some interactions where even though you take down the spell shield, mm -hmm. you still get something. I forgot which champions there are that does that, but I realized after, like, the third key, I was like, shit, I'm not getting a stack. <laughs> What's going on? So I think I was delayed by, like, 20, 15 stacks. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> Well, hopefully it's not going to suck too badly. And again, you are going to face off against Dig. I got to ask, after this win, are you scared of Dignitas in any way? Well, I don't think as a team we are, but maybe my coach is. <laughs> more scared of bottom teams more than higher teams. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And guys, don't go anywhere. We've got a an update for you guys over on the LCS uh, on the playoff stage. So head over there. We've got more coming up after this. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <laughs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste. 